Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron <laughs> Williams. Hey, and hey, welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are radio for the local craft beer movement, broadcasting from our flagship studios here at AM 920, The Answer in Buckhead, Atlanta. I'm Aaron Williams. And I am Tim Dennis, and we're back from our vacation. We took a little time off for uh, for Turkey yeah, Day. Yeah, we did. Some rest, relaxation, uh, good meals, beers, and that. So, And uh, this week, we're going to be back at it talking about the most wonderful time of the year, which is the stout season, winter beer season, dark beers. I love that Deliciousness. season. Deliciousness. It's, so, yes. it's so nice. There's so many good, Just nice... in time for beer drinking season, That is Aaron. exactly right. You know what? To help us out with that, we've got uh, the crew from Kennesaw's Dry County Brewing Company in the studio with us today. Trey Singler, which has one of the best uh, titles I've ever heard, a co-founder and drinker, which is a, which is a great title. I wish I had that title myself. Uh, Jordan Maxwell Cooper, he is the... Or he is the uh, Co-founder and head of marketing and sales, and Baron Sluter, the head brewer. So, guys, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for having us. Definitely. Yeah, so, it. we've got no, we've got too many guys for not enough mics. So we're gonna have to. We do. Of we're making do. We'll make it make work. Do, we so. can make it work. So it's only kind of awkward. That's okay. Yeah, you guys just, can get close. And you and Baron kind of, get you close. Exactly. You, know, exactly. you guys exactly. can just share one chair if that would make it easier. That's for true. You, that's so. true. Yeah, the, that's, the there you go. that's right. There you yeah, go. we'll do that later. So. Speaking of beers, so yes. we got one here. As we said, we're talking about uh, dark beers here. So yep. winter beers, you can kind of be a a, a loose <clears throat> uh, translation, but. One of my favorites of the season, Vanilla Gorilla. Yeah, and they Red just Brick, uh, so. opened that up a couple of weeks ago. We went to the release party there a couple of weeks ago before Thanksgiving, and uh, yeah, this is good stuff. This is one of the nice ones, and they've got a little, some variants on that too, and they do a do a really nice job uh, with that too. So, awesome stuff. Yeah, definitely. So, so Aaron, uh, holiday man. Yeah, what'd you do? How was your holiday? You know, it was busy. You know, of course, I've got family in town, and uh, it was funny. My uh, mother and father-in-law just moved from California literally the week of Thanksgiving. They closed on their house on the Wednesday, and they were moving in on that Thursday. So I spent uh, some of my turkey day lifting and, uh, and carrying some things back and forth. But uh, but overall, it was pretty good. You know, we uh, uh, had uh, some nice, uh, almost a Monday night bottle share at uh, Thanksgiving. I brought a bunch of some Monday nights that I had storing up, uh, including like the Centaur, which is, of course, their dry air stout uh, that they've got aged. In, in whiskey barrels there. 004, the 005 uh, from their gar- Garage Club series, which uh, the 005 is an Imperial IPA. Uh, the 04 is a Scotch Ale that's uh, in in, uh, in maple syrup barrels, which is which is fantastic. And they're a tie five on a wild IPA as well. So those at, are great beers. They're fantastic. Yes. I was just uh, really happy to share those. With a lot of friends, I I have kept them in there, and I just wanted to share them with people who who liked good beer, and I was able to do that. And also, of course, is Black Friday. I've never done it before. Okay. So on Black Friday, I stood in line and I got some of the Bourbon County stuff at okay. Lincoln Fill Station. There you go. So. So, you know, if you're going to do it, at least it was for beer. It was for beer. So my dad and I stood in line and we got uh, a bottle each of the uh, Bourbon County Stout and, uh, and the coffee stout. And we were able to try the stout and the barley wine that was on tap at, at Lincoln Phil. So that was a good time. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. How about yourself? Very cool. Good, yeah. good week. Good yeah. time. Good Thanksgiving. I hosted this year, had a few friends over and uh, we uh, go. I got a fried turkey from uh, for those in the. The, the South, I Atlanta, fried Georgia turkey. area. Yeah. Bojangles. Oh, yeah. If you remember with Bojangles, oh, they yeah. did fried turkeys. Everybody raved about this turkey. One of the Amazing. best I've had. So we got the fried turkey, did all the other traditional dishes, opened some good beers. A couple that I had that I really enjoyed uh, was uh, Barrel-Aged Old Rasputin. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it was 18 was the version, the, the version rye barrel. That's just such a great beer. And it's one that a few years ago got a lot more hype. It doesn't get as much oh, yeah. now. But it's still fantastic. So, yeah. also got to try the uh, barrel aged uh, ten fifty that came out the stovepipe cans. Yeah, know? I was able to get a couple of those and another great one. Uh, went up and checked out a restaurant up in Canton that some friends had talked about, uh, Butcher and Bottle. Okay, it's a gastro pub there, so they do a lot of different cocktails. You know, a few beers and stuff, and a really cool place. Great food, awesome variety. That you guys on tap there. That Dry County on tap there, some other yeah, other local great... love at Butcher and Bottle. So enjoyed that place, and that was kind of my week. Yeah, that's a nice week to have. You know, it's yeah, kind of nice not to too get, bad. Take a break, spend some time with. I did and do some Black and... Friday shopping too. Okay, good. Yes, I did. I parked myself in my chair and I got the laptop out. <laughs> I don't and blame you. I waited in line for that for the time to click when yeah. the deals went on. That's how I did Smart. my shopping. So I, yeah. I rolled over at about four o'clock on Friday morning, and my wife was gone. And I'm like, "Are you kidding yeah. me?" She's she works an early morning shift anyway, so I think she was. She said she was already up and at him, but I'm like, 
more power to you. You just go do what you need to do. It's really Reformation drinking. Yeah, really. <laughs> that's right. Those 5 a.m. dark beers. Yes, that's, that's it. Uh, that's the way to do it. Exactly. Exactly. So, hey, speaking of beers, let's uh, check out Truck and Tap's Beer of the Week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. So, uh, as we talked about at the top of the show here, we are talking stouts, porters, dark winter ale, spice ales, and that. Just all that good stuff. Anything that is perfect for these cold, cold days that we have here. Yes, definitely. In this time of year. So, yeah, so we've got- uh, a few, you know, we're going to feature a lot from Dry County today, of course, since they're our guests here in the studio. And they brought several of their dark beers uh, with them. So, Old 41, which is your oatmeal stout, correct? We've also got the uh, chocolate porter. Chocolate right? porter, yep, our winter seasonal. And uh, Bad Ombre. Bad Baron, ombre. I, that's your child, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so that, that's one that we're looking forward to getting into. It's uh, Imperial Stout with cocoa, coffee, peppers? Yeah, so uh, cacao nibs, vanilla beans, and habaneros. There we go. Nice. Just, I love that type of beer. No, that's, I do, too. And it's it, a great so. name, of course. It was brewed right there at the height of the uh, the election season when a certain uh, presidential candidate was talking about uh, Bad Ombres. I thought that was a really good name. So <laughs> so well done. So Excellent. Looking forward to tra- cracking some of those open uh, here in the next uh, few minutes or so. But uh, before we do, got a couple of minutes uh, here. Let's go ahead and check out uh, what's going on in the headlines. What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. Sponsored by Your Pie Perimeter in the Perimeter Place Shopping Center across from Perimeter Mall. Yeah, so like I said, we took a week off, and uh, so we got lots of headlines and things to talk about uh, across the metro Atlanta area in the south and the beer world. So uh, first one, uh, you reported on this on BeerGuysRadio.com. Second Self. Uh, yeah. Guys uh, here in uh, metro Atlanta, they've been on the show here a few months ago. They're expanding their distribution. So, uh, so that's heading good. to Alabama. They are heading to Alabama. So, congratulations to them. Uh, they'll be seeing their beers actually by now. I said uh, December first was when they started. Yeah, December first. So. so, and they said that they will have their uh, core line as well mm-hmm. as seasonal featured beers will go over there. So, the uh, Thai wheat, uh, yep. mole porter, uh, the the what's the. Maverick, Maverick and Maverick Goza, and Goza. Yes, yes. yes. So, so yeah, that's a, that's a really nice Goza, by the way, too. So our, our listeners in Alabama, if you want to check that out, it's a good entry level Goza, not too tart, uh, really kind of nice drinking beer later on in the year. So that's uh, one of the things going on. We also have uh, another a brewery, uh, kind of making some headlines down south. Georgia Beer Company. They've uh, finally requested their permit to uh, locate in downtown Valdosta. So they're going through all the government exemptions and all that kind of fun stuff, uh, talking about uh, maybe having some event spaces and possibly opening up a brew pub downtown. But uh, right now they've got a conditional use permit uh, that's being recommended to by the uh, by the city commissioners down there in Valdosta. So hopefully they'll have some uh, roots soon and uh, and go from there. So good for them. Those Super are, nice guys. Definitely. So it would be great guys, to yeah. see them get, get opened up there. So. Yeah. Well, actually, our very first interview, I think, is what we did yeah. uh, at uh, with the Beer Guys Radio. So Baron was to yeah. talk to us at that time. Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, <laughs> at the time you were planning to head down there, some things mm-hmm. changed. So you're here and you're worked out for you with Dry County now. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, yeah. of course, I love where I'm at. But those guys yeah. down there are just they're awesome. Um, I love being down there. It reminded me a lot of... Uh, a lot of where I'm from, the Outer Banks. It was just yeah. a, a nice, quiet place, and, and everyone down there was just awesome. So. Very cool. Nice, nice. And uh, one thing, of course, we want to talk about, too, it's been in the news uh, also, uh, right up there in Gatlinburg, uh, up there in the Smoky Mountains, they've had some really awful fires, uh, some amazing video if you haven't seen those yet. Uh, I got in contact uh, recently with uh, the folks at Smoky Mountain Brewery up there in Gatlinburg, and uh, they say that their stuff is okay. Uh, they're going to be okay, but uh, they are going to be closed indefinitely, which is what I'm sure most of the uh, – people up there are going to be as well. So uh, we send our thoughts and prayers up to the folks uh, up in the Smoky Mountains. Hope they recover. And uh, again, Smoky Mountain might yeah. be okay, and, uh, yeah. and uh, hopefully they'll open soon. I know the rain came through that area as yeah, well, so hopefully that helped out with things. So, But it's, uh, it's getting bad up there. It's yeah, it was, bad. it was crazy. Of course, we had those almost forty, almost 45 days without any rain, and just all the wild, wildfires have been, been really uh, uh, kind of hurting things. So hopefully... Uh, folks will be recovering there soon. But uh, back to more interesting news, by the way, too. Uh, a, a new study uh, that uh, has uh, from, a, from a company called Cowan & Company. This is from Brewbound. Beer volumes declining in markets where recreational cannabis is legal. I saw that. Yeah. I, I don't know if the, what kind of connection there is, but apparently if you're in Colorado, Oregon, and Washington where uh, recreational cannabis use has been legalized, they are going to uh, – beer business is underperforming. So Interesting. I don't know if there's a connection between the weed and the beer drinkers, but, uh, you know, to each their own, I guess. I don't know. That, yeah. <laughs> Do, you know, I don't have an opinion on that one because that's not my cup of tea. Exactly. I'll stick with I'll stick with beer. But uh, 
it, it's interesting to see the the information there. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. So no, anyway, so we'll go ahead and take a break right now. Uh, you'll listen to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. We'll be back with the guys from Dry County coming up right after this. Hi, this is Bob Sandage, uh, owner of the Wreck and Bar Brew Pub. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. The Beer Guys are back right after this. Morgan and Lisa with Your Pie Perimeter here. We'd like to invite you to our store for a beer. Is there anything better than pizza? Yep, brick oven pizza that's made fresh and paired with a cold craft beer. That's what you get at Your Pie Perimeter, located in the Perimeter Place Shopping Center by Perimeter Mall. It's the perfect place to relax on the patio with a pint after work or bring the family in. Follow Your Pie Perimeter on Facebook for all our beer events and specials, including beer tastings that you won't find anywhere else. That's Your Pie Perimeter, located in Perimeter Place Shopping Center next to Chipotle. Tell them that the beer guy sent you. Hey, it's Aaron. I want to give a quick shout out to our newest sponsor. It's Hop Spot Beer Tours of Atlanta. Now, there's a lot of tours out there, but what makes Hop Spot Beer Tours different? Well, you get exposure. There's more to Atlanta craft beer than just breweries. A Hop Spot Beer Tour gives you the who, what, where, and when to craft beer right here in Atlanta and the state. Education. Whether you're a native, a transplant, or a visitor, you'll always learn something new. And connection. HopSpot connects you to guests, local breweries, and businesses to create those lasting relationships. We invite you to check out what makes HopSpot different. Like them on Facebook, follow them on Twitter and Instagram at HopSpotATL, and of course, visit HopSpotBeerTours.com. Use promo code BEERGUYS10 and receive 10% off your order. HopSpot Beer Tours. Hop on, get connected. That's HopSpotBeerTours.com. The Beer Guys Radio Show on the Beer Guys Radio Network. BeerGuysRadio.com Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Shake it back! Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio <laughs> Show. We're at BeerGuysRadio.com. We are broadcasting from the AM 920 The Answer Studios in beautiful Buckhead, Atlanta, Georgia. We're talking stouts, porters, everything wintry today. Oh, yes. Holiday beers with the Dry County crew. We've got Coop Dog and Dr. Trey and Baron in the house. Okay. Guys, <laughs> how's it going today? Well, we'll have to get you a nickname that, that rolls like a with it. Nickname so. or something. Yeah, exactly. We'll get you one. We'll get you one. So. <laughs> Nothing works. Coop, you just poured us some of your Old 41. Yes, sir. So would you like to tell us about this beer? Yeah, sure. Um, so Old 41 uh, right now is is in our core brand list. Uh, it's a 5.9% oatmeal stout. Um, and Baron can... Yeah. <laughs> Cooper, Cooper, Cooper likes to talk about beers like he's selling it to a bar every time he talks about oh, it. Oh, that's it? So, well, so, that so, okay. so I guess it's okay. Yeah, All right. That's right. So, yeah. Baron, Baron can talk I to did you about notice the when I was, beer, but, When yeah. I was looking up official titles, I, I looked at your Facebook profiles. Yours was <laughs> co-founder and drinker. Yours yeah. is co-founder in marketing and sales. So I see how when you go out and sell it, I'm going to hang back here and drink it. That's right. right? Yeah. yeah. Quality control. Yeah, it's going to be the operations guy to make sure things are going correctly, right? Exactly. That's it. So, so Baron, now tell us a bit about uh, the, the making behind this beer. Well, I was definitely looking for a, um, a beer that you can enjoy all year, you know, year round. Mm-hmm. Uh, first and foremost, I was inspired by uh, my first uh, brewery, Duck Rabbit. And uh, with their milk stout, I uh, obviously didn't use any lactose in it. That went a different route. Um, but I wanted to make sure I had a, a drinkable dark beer uh, that you could definitely enjoy during the winter. Um, you know, slight roast, slight chocolate. Everything is just real mellow in it, but uh, mainly just very smooth. Yeah, this is a nice drink. It's really beer, nice. Like it, is, like, it is an easy drinking stout. Yeah. You know, not too heavy on the palate. You know, <clears> just uh, got the good roasty flavors in there. Smooth, the creaminess to it, you oh, know, yeah. from the oatmeal. About 10% flaked so, oats in it. So. Very nice. Mm. Very nice, man. So, so guys, we're going to intermingle some discussion about your brewery with our talk about dark beer. So we had you on the show back, uh, I don't remember exactly like when it April, was, six months it? ago yeah, or so, April, May, like uh, when we were at the Depot Park Beer Fest. The Kiss so. Concert. At the Kiss, right. concert. the Kiss Concert. That was a good <laughs> cover band. That yeah. was a good show, actually. It but wasn't the real Kiss? It was. It, it, it was. Say, I'm, no, it was. No. Was, yes. Shh, Aaron. It's yeah, it was. Him. It's so. okay, yes. <laughs> we were sandwiched in a room between a Kiss band and a train train. <laughs> So that's how we, we work the things audio, out. The audio so, quality was yeah. perfect, exactly. Yes, exactly. And we were broadcasting live, too, so we had we no did. control it was over, a live show. Over, the, uh, over the trains that would come on through. We did. A, you know, people don't know the craziness that goes on. Like me running around trying to find John Near for his segment on the show. <laughs> yeah. and so You guys covered for me on that one, didn't have you, you? Have you found him yet? Not yet. Yeah. No, <laughs> one day. crazy hair and we'll one find day. him eventually. So. Yeah. But since that time, a lot has changed for you guys. So that's... Uh, 
I know there's plenty to to to, to share, but the first and foremost, you you have a brewery in Kennesaw now. At the time, I believe you were contract brewing. Yeah. So we, is... at the time, we were still contract brewing out of Lazy Magnolia. Mm-hmm. We had uh, we had our facility, our lease signed, but we weren't up and brewing there yet. So uh, we signed our lease in Kennesaw in February. We were building out, getting equipment ready, all that stuff. So. Uh, we opened our tasting room in September, and so for the past couple months, we've been uh, we've been there pumping beers out of there, getting more beers in the market. So I think one of the biggest changes is we brought a few beers with us today. Uh, last time we talked, we just had the IPA and the the Blonde Ale out mm-hmm. in the market, and now we've got a uh, a great year round portfolio that we're proud of, and then some some fun stuff like Bad Ombre that we're we're excited to push out there as well. Yeah, and you've been able to bring Baron on board too as a brewmaster. That's probably helped you guys too in, in doing a lot more creative and a lot more one off type of things as well. Yeah, I get to do more of the drinker part of my title now. That's there a you great, go. Yeah, that's, that's a great it. thing. Exactly. Uh, yeah, Baron's been a great addition, obviously, and uh, and yeah, we're it allows us to be a little more creative, spend some time coming up with different recipes and all that. So, so we've uh, also been uh, talking a little bit. Like I said, where our our focus today is kind of on dark beers and on 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 stouts and on 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 those types of things. We're drinking one right now from you guys. Uh, what are some of the other good ones uh, that are out there? Maybe that uh, that I mean, there's so many to list. You, you know, know I put I put a list together, you did. Uh, and it was it was, it was pretty and it just kept going. Yeah, it convenient. just kept going. Yeah. So I tell you what, why don't we all uh, let let's share a few of of our favorites, and one of mine that we we've already drank the Vanilla Gorilla. Yeah. I just really enjoy that beer. Another one that comes out from a friends there at Red Brick is Hype Whale, and I believe that's a February release that they do it. Yep. And but both of those are very good. The the Hype Whale is an imperial stout aged on bourbon soaked oak chips. So another really nice one, uh, one that's just announced a release recently that uh, we went to a sampling of a couple of weeks ago, Three Taverns, Helm's Deep, uh, which is a bourbon barrel aged Russian imperial stout. They did a super long boil on that beer. Very smooth, very roasty. So the 17th, they'll be releasing that 750 milliliter bottles, brewery only release. So nice. get that one. But if uh, you're at the Strong Beer Fest today... Hopefully you got to sample that beer. Yeah, because so. that's going to be on tap too. So good deal yeah. with that. So a couple of ones that I really really enjoy too are um, you know from a terrapin the muhu chocolate milk stout, uh, fantastic. Uh, we also had a uh, the muhu chiato, uh, some of the variants and things like that that you can get as well. Really nice milk stout, really approachable, and they do a really nice job uh, with that uh, every year. Uh, another one really uh, one of my favorite coffee stouts that's here brewed locally is a Southbound Moonlight Drive. Uh, that's an imperial coffee stout. Again, it's got a nice roasty coffee flavor with it, but it doesn't have that bitterness to it. It's it's really drinkable, really happy, and they've got it in cans now too, which makes it a lot more accessible. So I think those guys do a really nice job with that Good too. Stuff. It is. Yeah, you so, know, and one that I just I just grabbed uh, earlier that just went into the coolers oh, this that. week. Okay, and it will be coming to retail next week. Burr Hickory Brewery's Courageous Conductor. Now that's a bomber. Now are they going to be only in bombers this year? I believe I bombers last year. and draft okay. is what you're going to see. I don't think these are going into four packs. Mm. I think it's going to be all bombers in this one. But Ooh. you can go to the brewery right now and get you one, there you one of these for your free souvenir to go, or look for them at retail next week. Excellent, so, excellent. And this is their red velvet cake porter. Nice. So yeah, so that's another good one. Yes. So yeah, definitely, guys. So how about you? So. I'm sure we've already listed a few of your favorites with some old 41 and bad ombre in that. Uh, but if you're not drinking Dry County, what are some of the beers that you guys like? Yeah, so Pretty much Aaron's list, I think. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're right. Uh, no, I uh, I mean, for me personally, I cut my teeth on Terrapin beers, so the Muhu and all the variants there, uh, those are definitely my go-tos. Now, you're the, a UGA grad too, right? So, I am. Yeah, yep. so that's why. So you're that's, kind of... That was kind of my intro to craft uh, was through Terrapin. Um, so I got lucky there, but uh, but yeah, Muhu and and even Wake and Bake and, and things mm. like that, uh, great great dark beers from those guys. Yeah, absolutely, and they do a, a lot of variants on those yeah, they too. Do. And that's I don't know if you mentioned that, Aaron. I was I was spacing out there for a it's minute, okay. but uh, they do you know the variations. Right. Yep. Uh, there's a French toasted Muhu Chiado, all of those really nice beers. Yep. Yeah, and I, I personally I love the guys down at Southbound and Moonlight Drive is a great beer. Um, Another one for me would be Cocoa Bunny at a Creature. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think absolutely. Dropping that. And that's just really coming out soon. this yeah. week, I believe. Cans yeah. coming. So they had some draft at the brewery, and then cans and releases are coming around soon. I yeah. believe it actually actually next week is when it's coming out. Yes. Is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, I mean, personally, I have to give a little uh, – I just actually just talked to Josh on the phone. Um, I got to give a little shout-out to Jekyll. Um, my favorite time of year is Christmas, and having the red, redneck style that you talked about for the first time last year is – just reminds you of having a, a, cup of co- a cup of coffee in the morning and watching the kids open presents and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I just love that beer. It's excellent. Yeah. It's got a nice peppermint to it, which is yeah. always fun. Yeah. 
And I'm all about Georgia beer, but we'll get some Alabama beer love here because because we're bo- both states on this show, right? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, we are. Yeah, Lily Flag, the uh, milk stout out of Straight Tail. That's a, very nice. It's, uh, yeah, it's real straightforward, easy drinking, but it, that's a that's a great beer as well. Yeah, you know, it, another one that's releasing soon is uh, Good People's doing El Gordo Day, which is their big yeah. imperial stout. It's like thirteen point nine percent on this. And I saw that. Uh, let's see the date. I've got it written down here. The tenth. Yep. Actually, so next Saturday is El Gordo Day at Good People. And uh, they'll have uh, 2016 El Gordo and Barrel Aged El Gordo, as well as a few vintage, I think 14, 15 of El Gordo and a Moly. So that's a, a big beast of a beer. Yeah, it is. They do a really nice job with that. So it's just kind of Birmingham's version of, of Hunapu's Day or something like that. Yeah. So it's kind of a big I need thing some of that in my life. I was going to say, I may have to <laughs> right. make the trip over to do that. And another one, too, which is you can get it closer to home, too. A Back 40s Peanut Butter Porter, too. Yeah. One of the coolest cans that the I've cans, seen. The cans, yeah. It looks oh. like a Skippy Peanut Butter it's can. So it is. Awesome. It's fa- they did a fantastic yeah. job with that. So I'm looking forward to, to cracking uh, some of those open as well. So, so yeah. So we've got uh, just a couple of minutes left here. So, uh, so yeah. But uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, really quickly, about uh, maybe some of the things that uh, the tap room has been doing for you guys. Uh, you guys just opened in September. You said, H- how's that been going so far? Yeah, no, I think uh, I'll take a stab at it, and you guys can can join in, obviously. But uh, tap room has been awesome. Uh, it's added a whole whole new dynamic to the the brewery that obviously we didn't have before, and you can't have until you have a kind of brick and mortar physical presence. So uh, being able to be open, we're open uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, so Thursday, Friday, uh, five thirty, eight thirty, Saturday, noon to eight. Shameless plug there. There you go. Um, and, there you uh, go. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. We've uh, we've had a lot of people through the doors. It's given us an opportunity to to try a lot of new beers before putting them out in the market. Uh, get feedback that way, um, and then also just kind of have fun with stuff. Throw casks on. Uh, had a bad ombre cask on last week. Uh, do different things and uh, and kind of interact with the the beer community uh, in some in some fun ways. Nice. I know we talked Trey before you guys launched, and you said one reason you wanted to go to Kennesaw is the the crowd there kind of you know the the older college crowd you know some younger people and then a lot of the beers that you were going to do your goal was to do introducible approachable beers for people like bad ombre and yeah, uh, exactly. habanero stout right <laughs> so yeah hey we got to take a break right now actually i'm sorry i lost track of time but uh beer guys radio we're gonna get that answer here just coming back after the break we'll be back right after this It's Aaron and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock is always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy. They have 12 of them. Bottles, too. Not sure what to drink? All of their beer servers are Cicerone certified. And if you got someone who isn't a beer fan, not to worry. Truck and Tap carries wine, mixed drinks, and even handcrafted sodas. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta-area food truck stand. Daily. That way, you're getting a different menu every day. Check it out. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guy sent you. Hey, this is Aaron. I want to thank you so much for listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We've got some really awesome things that are coming soon that will help us engage with you some more. We're not going to lie to you, though. It takes time, effort, and money to produce this show every week. So if you'd like to be part of the Beer Guys family, we would love your help. Head to patreon.com slash beer guys to become a sponsor. We're not going to beg. Okay, maybe just a little bit. But hey, we've got some great swag for those who become a sponsor. And you'll be among the first to know about the great things that are coming to the Beer Guys universe. Again, that's patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash beer guys. Or you can go to beerguysradio.com and click the sponsor link. We thank you for your support, and cheers. Morgan and Lisa with Your Pie Perimeter here. We'd like to invite you to our store for a beer. Is there anything better than pizza? Yep, brick oven pizza that's made fresh and paired with a cold craft beer. That's what you get at Your Pie Perimeter, located in the Perimeter Place Shopping Center by Perimeter Mall. It's the perfect place to relax on the patio with a pint after work or bring the family in. Follow Your Pie Perimeter on Facebook for all our beer events and specials, including beer tastings that you won't find anywhere else. That's Your Pie Perimeter, located in Perimeter Place Shopping Center next to Chipotle. Tell them that the beer guy sent you. Ahoy there, mateys. Hunting whales? We've got you covered with Tim's Whale of the Week. Yar. What do we got for whales there, Tim? Well, I've got a couple for you to keep an eye out for. So these uh, these released earlier in the week, but they are, you know, fairly limited in some that you do get in the winter months here. So you want to keep an eye out for them. Orpheus the Ferryman, mm-hmm. released earlier this week at the brewery. So keep an eye out, see if you can get that. And the, the Ferryman is... It's an imperial stout with coffee, chilies, and vanilla beans. 
Mm-hmm. Sounds sounds familiar. Might be one you guys would <laughs> like. So, and then courageous conductor that we talked about a little bit earlier, which is uh, you know at the brewery now in Bombers heading out to retail, uh, red velvet cake porter. That's nice. Yeah, it's interesting to see on the stouts. You know, a lot of folks are doing that coffee, that Mexican stout type yeah. of uh, type of thing with chilies and and you know, kind of from the Westbrook Mexican cake kind of variety. But uh, it's a really nice style. I really enjoy enjoy drinking that. Those flavors work it. well with it. You know, if you they don't do. get it too crazy in that, it's a, it's it's quite nice. So definitely. Yeah, Definitely. good so, deal. So, yeah, so, hey, we're here with the uh, Dry County guys, Trey Sinclair, Jordan Coop, Maxwell, Cooper, and Baron Sluter are all in the studio with us. That's You have way too many names, Jordan, and I can't I can't keep up. That's the problem. Because <laughs> you, you, you research off Facebook as well. That's what that's exactly. it is. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's how we do it. So uh, we opened up a brand new beer uh, during the break. Uh, can you tell us about this one, too? Yeah, so I'll start off, and then same thing. Baron can jump into the recipe, but this is our chocolate porter. So it's our... Uh, we don't like to put time frames on beers, but we'll call it a winter seasonal. Um, it's uh, right at about 6%. Um, good chocolate flavor, a little sweeter than the oatmeal stout, uh, but but still very approachable, easy drinking. You could throw a few of them back. So. Yeah, it was um, probably my favorite homebrew recipe. I brewed it a couple times uh, on the old system there. And uh, I just really want something that was a little bit more, uh, it, was, it was sweet, but a little more dark chocolate, not not nothing too crazy, nothing too, uh, nothing too prominent, but... Uh, um, stack some pale chocolate and some regular chocolate malt in there, and it's uh, it's one of my favorites, and I love drinking it. Yeah, it's good stuff. I'm enjoying it. So that's like I said, you know, this time of year, these kind of beers, this is my wheelhouse. Yeah, definitely. So. Right when that uh, that uh, the, the leaves kind of turn and the chill comes in the air, and, and I always said we said this back in October. I said I can't drink a drink a pumpkin beer. I can't drink a fall beer until like I'm thinking about yeah. having a sweatshirt on. You mean back in July back when the pumpkin Ju- beer is released? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Exactly. You know, so it's so yeah, but it's like I, I need to actually just kind of think about having a sweatshirt and there's some leaves on the ground that I have to pick up before I can start cracking these open. So so I've kind of plowed out all of my IPAs and now I'm now I'm into the these styles and porters and it's just making me very happy. Yeah. So because. we have a question here on a Facebook video on our yep. Facebook live. Someone said, "What's up with that?" Plum Saison. So, guys, what's uh, is that available now? Is it in the in the brewery? It is in the brewery. Uh, you can get it a select account here or there, uh, but uh, in the brewery for sure. Um, and we talked about it, I guess, before we went on air. I'm I'm losing track of time here. But, yeah, uh, so. okay. but but yeah, uh, the Plum Saison. We brewed it with Nathan um, first uh, in a series of collaborations uh, with local home brewers. Um, so that we'll have, we'll always have a beer in the tasting room that's a collaboration with a homebrewer. So we got uh, Nathan first up with this plum saison. Uh, his homebrew recipe pulled some plums from his family's farm up in North Georgia. Mm-hmm. So it's got local plums in it, which is awesome. Um, and then uh, next collaboration, uh, he might be watching. I don't know. Uh, John Sherry, uh, Little Cottage. Oh yes. Um, yep. Make some awesome beers. So yes, we're going to bring him in and uh, brew a batch on our five barrel and uh, throw that in the tasting room as well. That's good. That'll be good. Maybe a beer guys collaboration coming up soon. Perhaps. Yeah, we've actually already good. talked about that. Nice. So we'll, I'll fill you in later, Aaron. Okay, good. I appreciate we'll, that. So yeah, I'm always yeah. up for, for brewing some beer. That'll be good. I, so. I will say that the unofficial name of the plum saison is never for Nathan. So never nice. for Nathan. He'll love that one. Okay, <laughs> we'll make sure that he knows that. Never for Nathan. The unofficial official name. There you go. Beer, so. so so yeah. So guys, you're you're based up in Kennesaw, and uh, you know, of course uh, that that's your that's your hood, Tim, as well. Uh, I've always been amazed at how that beer, craft beer, uh, has kind of grown there. You know, of course, you've got Reformation, you know, you guys, Burnt Hickory, Southern Sky, uh, a great beer place like The Nest, for example, one of the better beer bars in the state. Uh, what has kind of developed that? How, how has that uh, come about and, 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 and really why? What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, for us personally, why we ended up in Kennesaw, uh, kind of our story, y'all mentioned earlier, us getting into craft beer, myself at, at UGA, Cooper at Georgia Southern, um, college towns, uh, getting into craft beer early. Uh, and that's what we kind of wanted to recreate in Kennesaw is, is have a brewery that could could get those kind of college age young young professionals into into the craft beer scene um, before they spent 20, 30 years, you know, drinking drinking the other stuff. So um, so that's kind of why we landed there. I think you got to give props to Scott Adine kind of being the, the godfather of, of the Kennesaw beer uh, scene, I believe. So, uh, From Burn Hickory, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, uh, and Tim's passing notes here, which is distracting me, but uh, he's <laughs> begging for beer. <laughs> Trey's, not, Trey's, not, uh, Trey's not good at radio. We want, no, we want the bad ombre is what he wants here, so uh, I don't blame him, actually. I thought that was my Telecaster. Or that's it. Yeah. Just just a, never I'm read what yeah. I'm writing down, man. It'll yeah. get you in trouble. <laughs> but, but, yeah, but there's, there's, a, actually, yeah. there's a good craft beer scene, I mean, already going on around us there, and uh, by no means do we intend to step up the game or anything like that and throw down, say they're not making good beer. Everyone's making really quality beer all the way around us. Mm-hmm. Um, but like Tim kind of said earlier, 
we're kind of making that lower ABV kind of intro to the new drinkers kind of style. Yeah. Um, and then we have some some kind of crazier one off stuff that that lends itself to people who are experienced drinkers. And that's the good thing, you know, something appeals to everybody there. You know, someone's not going to come in and uh, be offended by every bit like I can't drink this, you right. know, or right. someone who's more into beer isn't going to come in there and think everything's a little a little too light for him, you know. So. But, uh, you know, speaking of your beers, though, you guys do, mm. outside of this, you know, the Neon Neon, which is your Berliner that I enjoy quite a lot. Right. It's, uh, you have your namesake IPA, that, and your, your namesake and your blonde were the two you launched yeah, with, namesake, right? Yeah, namesake the Blonde Ale and Dry County IPA uh, were the two we launched okay, with. Right. Uh, we've added to the core, kind of, again, those approachable, get them, get them into craft beer beers. Uh, we've added Old 41, the Oatmeal Stout, and Noonday, the 100% Citra Hop Pale Ale. Right. Um, both of those are there. And then kind of the... The limited type stuff. We've got Neon, which you mentioned, and all of its variants, Neon Berries and, and mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, we've got Kennesaw Bourbon Ale. Uh, shout out to Lazy Guy Distillery there. Uh, we use some uh, Lazy Guy uh, soaked soaked oak there to to get that, that bourbon strong ale. Um, and a couple other limiteds, the Chocolate Porter and stuff like that. So. I, t- I tell you one that I really mm-hmm. enjoyed a few months ago. You had it over at the Nest, the Dank County. Right. I really yeah. like that. I'm, I'm a huge yeah. IPA fan, and that one was fantastic. Yeah, so that's the first release in our uh, rotating IPA line, kind of limited release IPAs. Uh, Dank County, it's been really popular at the tasting room um, and really popular when we've thrown it out there for, for events, tap takeovers and such. It's a uh, about a 7% uh, red IPA. So. Yeah, you know, with just an, I was just thinking when you mentioned Lazy Guy, within a few miles you can just get everything you need yeah. in life there in Kennesaw, you know, so you've got – Three breweries, a distillery, the Nest, World of Beer up on Chastain. Yeah, so. but you got Ironmonger and uh, Naughty Soda yes, right down the street down, too. Down so. there, Marietta, yeah. you got a cookout there. You so cook out everything you need, man. Cookout <laughs> is the greatest invention ever. I love yeah, that and, place. And uh, we <laughs> just started. Yeah, we just started a couple months ago uh, in Kennesaw, first Saturday of every month, doing a uh, a craft bus tour. I don't know mm-hmm. the official term, but basically uh, Saturday all day long. It'll it'll make about a forty five minute loop between the three breweries, mm-hmm. the distillery. Um, and a couple of local restaurants, and and make that loop free to get on, and then you just pay your brewery tour price. So a deal you can't really beat or find many other places. Nice, yeah, nice. absolutely. Yeah. Now speaking of nice too, Tim had had was not so subtle in telling you that he wanted the bad ombre, and uh, so you cracked that open, and it uh, is fantastic. It's great. I really, it's really like really the nice, heat guys. on the back of it. It it sneaks up on you. You know, it's like you take a few steps and. This is good. This is good. And then they're like, oh, yeah, there it is. There's you know, that's that what I really like in these. I don't, I want a little flavor of the peppers, but I've had some that it's just, hmm. the peppers just kill out everything else that's going on. Exactly. Right. You know, it should complement it. Mm. And yeah. that's, uh, so, Baron, why don't you tell us more about the bad ombre? Yeah. And I mean, like, like you said, I don't, I don't want to say anything bad about the beers that, you know, give you a little too much pepper or anything like that. But what I was looking for was, um, I'm a real big fan of Hunapu, obviously, you know, most of us are. Yeah. And uh, it was that type of heat that just comes at the end and it's real, uh, it's almost pleasant. You know, you don't, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't mm-hmm. burn, it's anything like that. It's just, it's just there. Yeah, it's right so here it's in awesome. the back of my, back of my tongue and back mm-hmm. right into my throat. It's right really there. good. Yeah. So, uh, the, uh, the story about this beer is actually kind of funny. So we, we, we got into the bright and, uh, you know, it was tasting good, got into the bright tank and uh, I was just kind of like, it's, it's just not there for me yet. Um, we, we, we got the, uh, the cocoa nibs, vanilla beans in there. And we were looking to, to, you know, looking for that flavor that we wanted. And I was just kind of like, it's not there. And uh, we got the habaneros in there. And I was like, the heat's cranking up. We need to get this carved and kegged. Take the carb stone, on, carb stone on, and the flavor just exploded. It just went all throughout the tank. And uh, at that moment, Nathan was there. And right. uh, him and I were just jumping around like, oh, my God, this beer is so awesome. So. <laughs> That's because I happened to stop by, I think, the day after yeah, maybe day or day after. of. but Because you texted me. You're like, hey, man, I've got this beer I'm really excited about. I'd love for you to try yeah. it. I'm like, well, I'm like two miles from you right now. So we can I stop by so now? So, yeah. That's insane. Excellent. Excellent. So. All right, guys. We're going to have to take a quick break here. We're talking to Dry County Brewing Company. You're listening to Beer Guys Radio Show, and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Jason Pellet, brewmaster at Orpheus Brewing. You're listening to Beer Guys Radio. Eat it, Scott. You couldn't do that. The Beer Guys are back right after this. It's Aaron and Tim, the Beer Guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock is always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy. They have 12 of them. Bottles, too. Not sure what to drink? All of their beer servers are Cicerone certified. And if you got someone who isn't a beer fan, not to worry. Truck and Tap carries wine, mixed drinks, and even handcrafted sodas. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta-area food truck station. 
daily. That way, you're getting a different menu every day. Check it out. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guy sent you. Hey, this is Aaron. I want to thank you so much for listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We've got some really awesome things that are coming soon that will help us engage with you some more. We're not going to lie to you, though. It takes time, effort, and money to produce this show every week. So if you'd like to be part of the Beer Guys family, we would love your help. Head to patreon.com slash beer guys to become a sponsor. We're not going to beg. Okay, maybe just a little bit. But hey, we've got some great swag for those who become a sponsor. And you'll be among the first to know about the great things that are coming to the Beer Guys universe. Again, that's patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash beer guys. Or you can go to beerguysradio.com and click the sponsor link. We thank you for your support and cheers. Morgan and Lisa with Your Pie Perimeter here. We'd like to invite you to our store for a beer. Is there anything better than pizza? Yep, brick oven pizza that's made fresh and paired with a cold craft beer. That's what you get at Your Pie Perimeter, located in the Perimeter Place Shopping Center by Perimeter Mall. It's the perfect place to relax on the patio with a pint after work or bring the family in. Follow Your Pie Perimeter on Facebook for all our beer events and specials, including beer tastings that you won't find anywhere else. That's Your Pie Perimeter, located in Perimeter Place Shopping Center next to Chipotle. Tell them that the beer guy sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, back to the Beer Guys radio show. I I was told that I could listen to the radio at a reasonable volume. Hey, Wits, welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are talking with the guys from Dry County uh, coming up uh, with us. So we're all talking some holiday beers, some dark chocolate uh, porter stouts. Bourbon barrel age goodness that uh, right. we get this time of the year. So, which is we're sipping awesome. on some courageous conductors. We were talked about earlier is one we like. So, very tasty, nice, tart, um, tangy, fruity, chocolatey, good beer. Burn hickory, yes. yes. So, uh, so technically, there, there. What is that's called the uh, the uh, uh, the velvet cake? Uh, red yes, velvet cake red velvet cake. Yes. We're keeping it in Kennesaw. Yeah. Yeah, so Kennesaw. that's it. That's it. So, so Coop, as we as we wrap up, and folks, there's way too many beers for us to mention in, in a show. We'll put a few more. We'll we'll try and do a little more comprehensive list in our post this week with uh with a show's episode. But uh, Coop, how about you? Any other beers that you recommend this time of year or going into the winter months? Yeah, I'll tell you something that I'm excited to kind of see again, and uh, some I'm looking forward to. Um, I love the Monday Night Bourbon Barrel uh, Drafty Kilt. Mm-hmm. That's a solid beer. Yeah. Um, the Big Brother Sweetwater. Uh, they do the Festival. Another yeah. solid. And then one I haven't had yet, but I'm looking forward to, is the Scoff Law. Uh, they're doing a barrel-aged absentia. Uh, it's an imperial stout in uh, Buffalo Trace barrels. So. Sounds, that's, yeah. That's you, good you stuff, You take a yeah. stout and throw it in a bourbon barrel, and, and I'm all about exactly. it. Exactly. So, yeah. happy, yeah. happy things happen, yes. You know, so. speaking of Sweetwater and their festive, they, they, they hurt my feelings a little bit this year. So, uh-oh. Happy Ending. Is is not happening this year? Yeah, you beat so me to it. You beat me to it. So see, yeah. <laughs> gonna say that. So, but yeah, that was one I really enjoyed, and I did too. You know, Sweetwater's a big brewery; they do things. You know, it's a business that they're running there. So, we've yeah. cracked them up here talking about the happy ending. The happy ending. It's beer, it was, guys. I don't, I don't have no idea what you guys are laughing about. I, it's, it's it's you know, it's it's. <laughs> I just think it's a the bad ombre, just getting everything. It's just the end of the exactly. year, the festive season. Yeah, that's right. I'm the not following. What's so funny yeah. here, exactly. guys? So. Trey, Trey said he beat you to it, and happy ending. <laughs> and all just, through it. Just, yeah. Hey, now, too that's much right. going on. Hey, yeah. Too much going guys, on. Grow up. Sorry, man. Barrett's telling. So, guys, we're about to wrap up here. Anything that we have not covered that you'd like to mention? Let folks know here. I feel like that's a loaded question. I don't know if there's a, a correct answer or a wrong right. answer. Um, I think uh, we can go ahead and, and put the word out there and not really put a lot of details behind it, but you can uh, you can more than likely expect to see Dry County beers in cans uh, middle of next year. Okay, so, nice. all right. Uh, we'll have to come back on the show and, and debut those for sure. But uh, I guess that's that's probably the big thing. Um, okay. And, uh, and, and yeah. Yeah, I would say also uh, we cut, talked a little bit about the tasting room earlier. Going to start doing some more events out of there now that we're a little bit more established. Uh, coming up December 10th, we're going to do a Toys for Tots bike drive. So if anyone in the area is looking to uh, 
donate something to a charity and drink delicious beer at the same time, come up and see us. It's a win-win. And that's yeah. also the same day as the Kennesaw Craft Tour. So Okay, awesome. So, yeah, and if you're not up in the Kennesaw area, you can also get a lot of your stuff on tap uh, across across the metro Atlanta area, correct? Yeah, for sure. So uh, we've we've definitely focused more on that Cobb County, Cherokee County area mm-hmm. uh, to start out, but, but we are expanding out there, uh, larger territories. We've brought on a couple sales reps, uh, Cecily and Phillip, shout out to them. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so you can find us on tap all around town. We've got a, a feature on our website where you can you can see where we are and where you can find us. But which you can actually do now, right? Which, which we can so, legally, yes, legally legally do Thank in you, the state, state of Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, right. Yeah. So excellent. Well, cool. Congratulations, guys. You guys have have really grown a lot from just really the past six months when we talked to you first. Uh, really, just kind of in leaps and bounds, and and quality stuff, and uh, just really good beers. Thanks, guys, for coming up, yeah. and joining us. I think it was that yeah. that first appearance on Beer Guys that just it propelled I, us. I'm so. sure that's what it is. 100. percent it. So. Well, absolutely. You are that. welcome. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for having us, guys. We appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we appreciate it. Definitely. Thanks. So so yeah. So we've got uh, several minutes. So we can drink some more beers, and we can talk about events, and we can do about all this kind of stuff. Hey, listen. There's one thing in the in the headlines, by the way, that I that I didn't get to. By I hope way. it's the one that I'm like, I want to talk about that. I really what, do. Tell me. It's, See it's which one it is. It's the last one here. So, yes. So I, I saw this on Facebook. Uh, Jason Dominey, uh, one of the friends of the show and, and one of the guys who uh, co-hosted when I was uh, on vacation. Uh, one guy, he posted this on Facebook the other day. He paid $5,000 for a 2013 Toppling Goliath Vanilla Bean Assassin Stout. Now, it wasn't even a bomber. It was a regular 12-ounce pour of that, I believe. $5,000 for a beer. You know, That's insane. I tell you what. I guess it's all relative in yeah. that, you know, you can spend your money any way you want. Like, there are certain beers that I search for that I would call my white whales. You I know, agree. I was talking yeah. to, to a friend about this recently, but there's there's people that take it to another level that's definitely not a level I'm on where they, they're they searching for, like, a, a 1999 Canteon that's yeah. a $3,600 bottle. That's I'm not looking to pay $3,600 for a bottle of beer. No. It's, it's not likely to happen. Perhaps if I hit the lottery, my opinion on the cost of a bottle of beer would be different. Yes, but uh, yeah, that and I see that that beer black book website. It shows the values of beers that people have traded or mm-hmm. sold. Yeah, uh, you know, collectible collectible beers. Yes, because you know, of course individuals can't sell beers unless they're no, collectible. I have no idea what you're talking about exactly. So. But <laughs> it's crazy. I have a few Aaron in my collection that. Have recently sold for two hundred and fifty dollars a bottle. Yeah, and and that's probably about my limit. I think about two bills is about good for me. My wife would probably kill me and kick me yeah. out of the house for about a week, but uh, I I could probably pay about two bills for that. But once you get to five figures, four figures, that's that's that's, that's a lot of cash yeah. to throw. But down again, for a beer. you know, I, I'm to assuming if own. he did it, yeah. I mean, it I mean, you could, know, five, so. five grand is a lot for you and me, but to Mark yeah. Cuban, it's you know, it's pocket yeah. change, you know, something That's right. like that. It's a so. McDonald's value mill, exactly, kind of thing. Exactly. So. so I always thought that was interesting. Yeah, Beer Black Book uh, is a, is a fascinating place to look at. I've because, spent time just looking on there, just seeing, uh, you know, what it is. There's a there's a website called like My Beer Collectibles and all this. There's an insane culture around beer trading. Yeah, and the secondary market. That's. That's my the dirtiest word to me in craft beer is secondary value. I agree. I agree. That's I mean that's just hear dirtiest? people. That's well, that's well. Until you differs. came here, yeah. started talking about uh, <laughs> all this. You guys start talking about the happy ending beer. Someone over here is is uh, talking about. Let me see your cans. You're you're a bad influence on on our exactly. Facebook viewers. Here, exactly. So. Yeah. This used to be a family show. This is this the last time you guys aren't. That's right. Back. That's Maybe right. Baron. He's he's been nice. Yeah. That's so. right. <laughs> By the way, I'm selling a crowler of uh, bad, bad ombre for five thousand dollars. So, oh yeah, oh, let yeah. me get two of those. Oh, yeah, so yeah, we'll hook them up. So okay, so so yeah, so something to ponder. I think it's uh, something worth talking about uh, as we as we go along. But uh, right now, though, it is time for the hot list. Time for the hot list. The beer guys have the scoop on what you need to know for next week. That's hot. So, so do you want me to go first? Or you want to go first? Or? You know what, Aaron. After you, go right ahead. Tell us what's that. going Thank on there you. in Alabama. Absolutely. We've got uh, on Sunday a chocolate and beer pairing at uh, Old Town Beer Exchange in Huntsville. So it's going to have Pizzell's Confections and Bell's Brewing. So chocolate and beer, I'm a big fan of that. So on Tuesday, this is not a beer event, but uh, I liked it, so I'm going to put it on the list. Master distiller Jimmy Russell and his uh, son is going to have a bottle signing and tasting. And, of course, uh, Ma- uh, Jimmy Russell is behind Wild Turkey and Russell's Reserve Bourbon. So uh, that's going to be a rail yard brewing company in Montgomery Tuesday at 5 p.m. So check that out. That should be good. And uh, this one is kind of cool, too. A Hop City, Birmingham. They did a collaboration with Yellowhammer. And they're going to have that beer release on Friday. Uh, basically, they've got uh, Precious, which is a Belgian pale ale aged in Chardonnay barrels. 
Chardonnay barrels. Chardonnay. Chardonnay. That's how the fancy people say it. Chardonnay barrels. And then they've got Grace, which is a soured version of that. That's going to be re- released on Friday, like I said, at Hop City, Birmingham. So That's uh, a sour L in Chardonnay barrels. Is Chardonnay, that right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. It's a black fly in your Chardonnay, as they say in the 90s. So, uh, what have we oh, got you took George? it way back there. I did, man. That's how I roll. That's how I roll. Yes. Roll. Yes. It. You know, speaking of wild turkey, the wild turkey 101, mm-hmm. uh, that's a nice bourbon. That's good that's stuff. It's got yeah. some heat to it, but it's really good. So, awesome stuff going in. In Georgia yep. as well, Aaron. So on Monday we have Cinco de Siberias, which is the Mexican Siberias release there at Wrecking Bar. Uh, Wednesday we have one off Wednesday at Red Brick. Always a good time. Mm-hmm. They put a special beer on tap there. On Thursday, even tied pint night at your pie perimeter. Nice. Craft beer, uh, featured pint for $3.14. Pizza, can't beat it. Thursday, the Hoot Nanny 2016 at Southern Brewing Company over in Athens. We also have the Miss Pinup. 2017 at Red Brick on uh, next Saturday, Pub Crawl on the Beltline, and a holiday pop-up market at Arches. That's all next Saturday. Lots of stuff going on. That's good. It so, is. So, yeah, so if you've got uh, a, f- a fan of craft beer in your list, maybe you can go to some of those and get some souvenirs for uh, the uh, the tour back there. So Absolutely. Also, too, of course, uh, next weekend uh, on Saturday, too, it's, uh, it's going to be on the 10th, by the way. It's going to be the... Uh, the, uh, the, the, at, get comfortable uh, get, at Lincoln Fell Station. Lincoln Station. Yep. We're, we're going to be there as well. So so check that out. So very cool. Uh, um, also, we get a giveaway to give away. That's right. We do. About that. I, yes. So we take a week off and, and we're clueless. I just, we're, just, we we're, have we're, no, we're a mess. Exactly. Well, our giveaway winner this week is Meredith Orr. Meredith, thank you so much for subscribing, following along with us. If you will drop us an email to beerguys at beerguysradio.com with your address, we'll get you a swag pack out. There you go. Aaron, you know the drill, man. Tell them how they can enter. Well, Tib, all they have to do is sign to head to BeerGuysRadio.com and sign up for this week at Georgia Beer. You'll get all the information about what's going on in Georgia Beer from Tim himself. I can't do that voice for very long. And uh, you'll be signed up to enter the swag pack. So head to BeerGuysRadio.com. Click on the uh, the little banner at the top of the link where you get a pop-up as well, and uh, you'll be entered to win the swag pack. Plus, more importantly, you'll get uh, this week in Georgia Beer, all the events, all the good stuff that is going on in craft beer around the state. And our swag packs have awesome stuff, Eric. There's some really we good stuff. We get tour passes. We have mm-hmm. coasters. We have stickers. Sometimes there's T-shirts. Hats, T-shirts, glasses, stuff Glasses, like hats. Beer guy sticker we'll throw in there. I got a lot I of stuff I think Aaron sometimes tosses a sandwich in there. Sometimes a banana. <laughs> so, that's yeah, it. that's absolutely. So, yeah. So, hey, it's about time to wrap it up for this week. Coming up next week, we're going to head up north to North Georgia, that is. Talk to Fannin Brewing Company. So thanks for listening. Check us out at BeerGuysRadio.com and on the socials. Thanks for the Dry County crew for joining us today. And don't forget to drink local. Cheers.